Hey guys, I am Siddharth and I had promised you guys a setup tour once we hit 1000 subscribers. So today we are finally going to check out the things that I used to make these videos. So let's check that out. First we have to talk about the thing that my setup is on and it is on my custom nano white marble desk which has completely changed how I think about computer desks. This is just the whitest and glossiest material that you can get. It just doesn't get scratched or stained and even though you may have to get 5 or 6 people to get this 700kg thing installed, I think that it is completely worth it. This is also quite affordable compared to the other options that will break like matchsticks in comparison. So if you don't plan to move your desk a lot, I really think that this is an unbeatable option. Then we of course cannot not talk about my PC as this is one of the main things that my channel is about. This was extremely difficult to find parts for because of the global chip shortage. So even though it took some time, we do have some nice specs in it and the RTX 3080 Ti Supreme X combined with the Ryzen 9 5950X on an ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero in a Lian Li O11 Dynamic XL with 11 fans really makes up for a powerful system. And yes, I am aware that Intel is coming up with something new and I'll also be covering that on the channel so you know what to do. For displays, I use 3 27 inch 4K IPS monitors and I think that this is a way better solution for me compared to those ultra wide monitors that you see other people using. I use a dual monitor arm and an extra tall monitor arm to set these up and I keep getting asked about these so I'll just link them in the video description. The monitors on top and on the left are 4K 60Hz panels but my main monitor is the LG 27 GN 950 which can go up to 4K 160Hz which is super awesome because you can get high resolution and high refresh rate. Now the reason I have one monitor on the top instead of on the right is not because I want to keep my PC in the frame but it is because of my speakers which are the Adam Audio A5XS. They have really special AMT tweeters and carbon fiber woofers and if I keep them too far, they just don't sound right in my room. So a 2 monitor distance is perfect between them and I think that my audio gear costs more than my PC so I am obviously very serious about audio. I really think that speakers are one of the most overlooked parts of a PC setup and people just don't know what they are missing out on. Even getting one of these more affordable speakers will really give you an amazing experience. I also use these ISO acoustics speaker isolation stands for these speakers which also make a huge difference in the sound that you get. One of the most important things for creators like me is of course writing content. So having a good keyboard is extremely important and for me, the best keyboard on the market at any price is the Logitech G813. I just can't go back from its amazing low profile linear switches and the extra buttons on it combined with the endless customizability with the Logitech software really makes this the best keyboard. I just wish that Logitech made this more easily available in India. The mouse that I am currently using is the Logitech MX Master 3. I wasn't too sure about this working well but after using it, I can see why all the YouTubers are so crazy about it and I would agree with people who say that this is the best productivity mouse that you can buy for productivity. It also has a super advanced magnetic scroll wheel that just feels very cool to use and I really hope that this doesn't start double clicking like my G604 which was probably the best mouse for productivity and gaming. My main headphones are weirdly named Headphone as they are from a German pro audio company named Head Audio. These are just totally different from even other audiophile grade headphones as they are the world's first full range AMT driver headphones which is the same technology I mentioned being used in my Adam speakers. At 1.5 lakh rupees, they of course have to sound really great but these are also around 700 grams in weight and they are more of a sound helmet than a headphone so it's really not something that you would wear for a 5 hour gaming session so I use different headphones according to the use case. I have made a separate video on what kind of gear you need to run these audiophile headphones because you really cannot drive them with your average devices. But one device that can handle exotic headphones like this one along with also managing my studio monitors while also giving you almost infinite control over your audio is the RME ADI2 Pro FSR BE and it really has all kinds of analog and digital inputs and outputs. This is just an end game DAC and amp for me and even the audio inputs it has are world class. Preparing my 25 minute video on this almost took me a complete month but I will say that this is probably the device that I love the most in my setup because of how game changing it is. 
I also currently have the more affordable ADI2 DAC with me because they are just a perfect matching pair that allow me to compare up to 3 headphones at the same time so I can share the most accurate comparisons with you guys. Chairs are also of course very important for anyone who has to sit a lot which is basically all of us these days so I use the Green Soul Monster Ultimate which everyone in India seems to be using. I am constantly looking for better chairs but the office chairs that I have found don't have the recline feature for their backrest which I consider to be extremely important so even though people keep debating between office chairs and gaming chairs I just haven't been able to find something better yet. The main light that I use is the Godox UL150 and this is a unique light because it doesn't have a fan like most other lights have so I bought it as soon as it came to India and I always kept wondering whether spending money on a light like this would be worth it or not because the Philips LED bulbs I used to use were also working fine but getting a proper video light really makes a big difference in the skin tones so if you are on the fence I can tell you that it is really worth it. These lights also don't flicker like the regular lights at home so I can shoot at any frame rate versus being limited at 25 or 50 and I keep it at 50% while shooting these videos so the extra brightness definitely helps if you need to use your whole room as a reflector and diffuser. I also have these RGB lights to add some splashes of color to the shots and these also go white on the other side. Microphones are the category that I have probably wasted the most money in because I just had to buy things first and then check out whether that thing worked well enough for me or not. The main mic that I mostly use these days is the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure and it is a large diaphragm condenser mic which sounds great. I had also experimented with getting a shotgun mic like other YouTubers but that didn't work well in my room. I was getting some unwanted reverb in the room with the lav mic so I decided to go with a mic that would be visible in the video but you guys said that this is what you preferred and it does sound much better. The camera that I use to shoot all of my videos is the Fujifilm X-T3. It shoots in 4K which is downsampled from 6K so you really get very sharp video from it. Fujifilm colors are known to be some of the best in the industry and the 16-55 f2.8 lens I use on it also gives you very sharp footage along with also offering very fast autofocus. The retro style controls on it not only make it look super cool but they also make using it very easy and Fujifilm cameras are really the most fun to operate. Currently we are shooting with an X-T30 which is also a great B camera with all of the essential functionality of the X-T3. I also have this artificial plant because you really cannot become a tech YouTuber without it. Tripods are also very important pieces of gear that you shouldn't cheap out on and I have two of the Manfrotto tripods with a fluid head and a ball head. These are the first pieces of equipment that I bought for the channel and they are still like new so I can really recommend these. I also have some sliders but I really haven't been able to find a good slider with a flywheel or a motor in India which would have made my life much easier. Now you will keep hearing from YouTubers about how you don't need very expensive gear to have a successful channel and that is absolutely true. Making videos that many people find to be useful is way more important than the technical aspects but some things like getting the audio quality right is absolutely essential and these days YouTube has become extremely competitive especially in tech so you at least have to know how to make the best out of the resources that you have. But I will say that being able to use good things does keep you motivated and I am really grateful to have the opportunity to use some of the best tech in the world and I have you guys to thank for that. So thanks for watching my videos and not just this one. I'll have links to buy the things that I mentioned in the video description and I'll also link to the reviews on these individual devices there which you can also check out. Let me know if you have any questions about anything in particular and I'll try to answer them. Thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you disliked it and I'll see you in the next one.